we've just set off here in Malaysia. There's five adults on board, which is actually probably the most we've ever had on board. It's usually Riley and I and at least one other crew. I'm Ellie, I'm from Manchester in England. What do you think about sailing? You've been on the boat before. Last time I was on a boat was last time I was with you guys and I didn't get seasick, so touch wood, I still don't. So happy to have you back? Yeah, so good to be back. So nice to see you all and the kids. You would have seen in the last episode, I said how excited I am to have the crew that we've got on board. It's a different dynamic that we've got going on at the moment. My name is Forrest. I'm from uh, the south coast of New South Wales. And um, I'm here to, what am I here to be doing? A bit of everything, I think. A bit of everything. Back home, I do a lot of windsurfing and surfing, some diving. Uh, in the past, lived on a sailboat as well. I just like being outdoors and traveling, really. Done a lot of traveling, so to be able to do that with you guys is a, is a dream for sure. Can't get ready, uh, can we, for Nah, no, not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we, Elena and I sailed like halfway around the world and tens of thousands of miles with just us two. And we're really loving just hanging out with other awesome people. Yeah. Oh, we're getting the full interview. Yep. Jamie Leitner, I'm a Cairns boy from Australia. Yep. I love my sailing. If I'm not sailing, I'm kite surfing or diving or something. My partner and I spent the last couple years living on the boat from Cairns, Great Barrier Reef, all through the Torres Straits, and then big season in the Kimberleys, and now exploring the WA coast, which is just amazing. So, yeah. um, you got a little chance to zip off to Malaysia. Yeah, and here we are yeah. checking out a bit of Asia. We're sailing around the north of Malaysia to get into this river. There are elephants. Pygmy elephants. Orangutan. Proboscis monkeys. Oh, those. They're really ugly, but I do want to see them. Yeah. And Lots also crocodiles, crocodiles. Oh my God. That's going to be terrifying for me. Lenny's very excited to see the crocodiles. And after that, we're actually sailing up to the Philippines and then Japan later this year. So stick around. Our journey from Kota Kinabalu to the Kinabatangan River spans over two nights, three days marked by stops at some of the most picturesque anchorages along the way. Given the presence of large logs floating in the waters here, navigating through the night as we'd normally do poses too much of a risk. And we need to minimise any unnecessary risk where we can because, as you'll find out in this episode, boat life naturally just has a way of keeping you on your toes. You're going to freak out. Why am I going to freak what? out? Because there's a bar crossing oh. for the river. Yeah. We should wait for the change of season until the winds are south-west, but the winds are north-east. So the wind and the waves are like crashing on the bar crossing. Yeah. So depending on the conditions, we'll either be able to go up the river or we won't. So I'll need to make that decision on the day. We've contacted a bunch of people. We have searched Facebook groups. We have spoken to people who've been up the river, spoken to people who decided against going up the river. The final decision will be made when I'm looking at the crossing at just going like, do we have the balls or not? It really is, it's pretty hectic. When you're underway, it's not super nice to be down below, putting your head upside down. Like I would personally get quite seasick if I was to tackle that now. So tonight when we anchor, we're gonna, I'm gonna have a tidy up in here. Like I've currently got my secret stash of chocolate <laughs> here where books should go. Gotta have a secret stash of chocolate though for remote emergencies. Oh yeah. We're gonna go check out some elephants, aren't we? We are currently doing nine and a half knots with the engine and the headsail up. We were gonna go over the top and around into this place called Kudat, but Jamie wisely pointed out that by the time we went down and then up again, it would take an extra two hours and we could just anchor on the corner up here and then go straight across tomorrow morning. So 
we've had a, a few little changes of plans in the navigation department. Very impressed with the boat at the moment. The engine's cranking along. There's a bunch of fishing boats out here. Forrest is asleep. Ellie's been looking after the kids. Um, Elena and I have done a workout, which was very difficult underway. It probably looks really calm to everyone with the sea state here and we're not moving around much, but even with just four knots, six knots, and us motoring at nine knots into that, everything's probably 25% harder. You're 25% less likely to do something. Like, you know, everyone just moves that much less and you're less inclined to do stuff. So really happy that we got a workout in. The crew's just amazing and we're all just chill and happy and it's great. That is just gonna go straight up. Such light winds, we're still motor sailing. I didn't actually help Jamie and Riley get the sails up earlier because I was uh, homeschooling the kids. So yeah, Lenny's homeschooling is in full force now and he's doing really well and he loves it. Jamie and I have been having a little discussion. He thinks that this anchorage is gonna be fine. I'm a little concerned. We're here, coming over into here. The wind is coming from 60 degrees. We're going that way. So the wind is gonna be coming into the anchorage like this. It changes direction tonight, but I never go into an anchorage that isn't calm, and this is not gonna be calm. So I really hope that the wind does swing around tonight, otherwise we could have a pretty rocky, uncomfortable sleep. There, we don't have many options. There's no all-weather anchorage. Wow! There is. But we can't really be bothered going around there tonight. We get there at 9, 10 p.m. We think that we'll get away with up here, or Jamie does, and I'm a little hesitant. This is the best spot to sit on the boat, up in the sail bag. I just wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor of the video, which we're so grateful for, and that's BetterHelp. We love all that they're doing. Living the lifestyle that we do with the extreme highs and the extreme lows has definitely had an impact on our mental health over the years, and that's shown up in different ways. It's been, you know, depression, and then my case of burnout last year. I just wanted to remind you guys, if you are struggling, a lot of people are, and don't let the highlights of people's lives on social media, because that's exactly what they are, highlights, make you think that you're alone in your struggles because we're all just making it up as we go and no one's got it together, I'm sure of it. So yeah, if you are struggling, please do talk to someone, whether that's a friend or family member, or you might be interested in taking up therapy like we have. Even when you're on a high, there is still so much value in talking to someone. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you unbiased advice. You just go to their site, you can use our link, it's betterhelp.com forward slash sailing, and you answer a few simple questions that takes no time at all, and then you're matched to your own therapist, usually within 48 hours, which is super fast. And if you feel the need to switch therapists down the line, if they're not the perfect fit, you can do that and that's free of charge just with the tap of a button. Therapy done online is super convenient because we can obviously do it from out here on the boat or you could do it in your house. You can use voice call, video call, chat or messaging, just whatever way makes you feel the most comfortable and their scheduling flexibility is pretty amazing as well. So if you'd like to let BetterHelp connect you with a licensed therapist, you can use our link. It's betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. I'll pop the link in the description box below as well. 
well and enjoy a special discount on your first month. Thanks so much guys, do take advantage. We made it. Head sailors going in. We're about to drop the mail. I've lost my voice. I think the kids made me sick. <clears throat> <laughs> so there's reef around and the concern here is that we anchor and then hit reef but it's been a gradual ascent um, from nine meters it's starting to get shallower here now what's so the we'll dagger board at? the dagger board is a 2.7 okay. and we're nearly on the shore here now mm -hmm. so it went from like nine meters to seven meters to four meters so i'm going to go back here to where it was about seven meters and, and anchor there Sleep. I said that I would get up early to motor around the top of the point and get us underway because we need to get far enough east so that we can head south a little bit and then we won't have wind on the nose. Anyway, the point is that we need to leave pretty early this morning. It's fun. I love this. Shit. This is where the, when these little difficulties creep in, that's when the adventure begins. Forrest and Jamie both slept out, slept out on deck, so I'll film them a little bit because they're going to have to wake up anyway. So I'll just show you what everyone's doing. Morning. Hello. <laughs> How you going, mate? What a sunrise. Beautiful, isn't it? First light. Good morning, mate. Good morning. This is looking for the camera. How are you guys going? Good. I slept like an absolute log. Did you? How did you go? It was actually super nice. I had a little moment um, when we first went to sleep, and the stars were so bright and shooting stars, and they were amazing, hey? Oh, it was actually um, really cool experience. Last night we went around and asked everyone like what was their best moment and their worst moment of yesterday, and we did it to Lenny, and his best moment was seeing the satellite last <laughs> yeah. night. His yeah. worst moment was going into time out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame him. Yeah. Behind us is the tip of Borneo. It looks beautiful. It's good. temperature alarm on the 24 volt battery system yeah. so down below we've got the batteries that are forward that are in front of the engine and we were umming and ahhing as to whether or not to completely block that off so the batteries don't overheat when we've got the engine running because it's a busy big compartment down there with a lot of stuff going on what happens is when they reach 45 degrees they stop charging so they've stopped charging they shouldn't get any hotter but I need to monitor that 
I'm just talking to Dylan to make sure that there's nothing else that I need to know um, whilst we go. What's going on, Jamie? We're uh, going for a quick swim because the water's beautiful. Uh, we're just going to check out the prop. We can't get it out of overdrive, but we're not getting max revs again, so. Hey, that's, that's... Might just be like still some stuff in the teeth. Just a bit of growth. Feels better. Yeah, not, not yet. I mean, yeah, it's revving appropriately now, but uh, I'm just having a fly with the autopilot and two children. Lenny, can you just keep your hands off for a sec, mate? Might have to loosen the tack off and we'll just get the bone to sit in there. What are we up to, Riley? We are hoisting a massive sail. When we crack off a bit, the wind's coming from here. When we head further south and the wind is more at 60 degrees apparent, then we'll um, unfurl this sail and then we should be doing, we should be doing definitely more than wind speed. So, so is this the biggest sail on the boat? Yeah, it's massive. Bigger. Might have been caught a little bit, but I think it's free now. That's it. <laughs> All right, what's happening? We're rolling out the code zero now. It's only seven knots, or six and a half. So if we get over wind speed, I'll be happy. I can tell that you're not excited at all. <laughs> you're not asking for much either, is he? Hey, uh... <laughs> we are cooking. Three. Seven. There's so much tail up there. <laughs> Give us some numbers. 8.6. Faster than wind speed? Yeah. <laughs> What are we doing? But we're putting away the code zero. Right, let's talk about how awesome the sailing was. We ended up doing about a boat speed because we're going up current about 8.8 .8 in eight knots. So it's really, really good. A bit of tweaking still to do. Yep. We're gonna anchor behind this island. It looks so beautiful, the sand is so white. But yeah, today was a slow day, everyone napped at different points. Jamie, did anything exciting happen today? Anything? Oh, oh, we went faster than the wind! Oh, that's true, we did. Red is off. Blue is free. Riley's never gonna learn which of the knobs. We've got a red and a blue knob and you pull it to either release the mainsail or hold it tight to lock it. And every single time he's like, red is to, <laughs> blue is free. Just think handle? blue is free. Okay. Yeah. Just flaking the main, we've gotten a lot better at this since we first got this boat. We were hopeless at the start. What's happening? We're just trying to find a place to anchor. There's a patch of reef up here, there's a patch of reef over there, and in between there's a little bit of shallow ground. So we prefer to anchor there in six than here in 20. Beach. Yeah, it's, all, it's a big road, you gotta go around. 
Hello. What kind of research do you do here? Research, uh, we like do coral or corals, fish, awesome. fish biomass. Uh, so here it is. Okay, this is the coordinate of the uh, marine protected area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this. Uh, we don't plan to spear any fish. We're not fishing. Thanks for the work you do here too. It's uh, it's really good. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Maybe just go to the left because we'll go around to that big long beach that we saw. What are you going to do on the beach, Darwin? quietly to find it. Let's see. The locals were so nice, they just told us the the rules, no fishing here at all and no littering of course. Oh, we needed that swim so bad. Today was really hot on the water. Run me through what happened. Well we just met some of the guys from the research centre and they just they just dropped us some baby towels. Just didn't say anything, dropped a bucket of baby turtles on them. Oh, okay, good years at swimming, go mate. Stop. No. <gasps> this is so cute. No, you can't lift them, they have to find their own way to the sea. It's pretty cool, eh, Darwin? I've never seen that before. It was my dad! You collect the turtles in the bucket from the eggs uh, or? Yes, uh, this the area, uh, Rifkade, this take care of this island and they see what uh, the sir. Uh, they are egg, if they come, the sir come to the, uh, what's it called? Uh, beach, uh, we take the eggs and put over there. Wow, uh, and, and look after uh, them? Uh, they look after them. After three months, they will release the turtle like this. The maximum X is 180. Maximum. They can reach. 180 uh, eggs per uh, horse bill. Wow. Bye bye! <laughs> Hello. Hello. and they tipped him out from a bucket and they all climbed to the sea. What? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. What have you made here, guys? Um, black bean burritos. This is for you. Thank you. Burrito. Burrito? Oh, I thought it was a cake. <laughs> Amazing. A cake? Yes. This afternoon was such a surprise, <coughs> seeing those turtles. <laughs> They just casually brought a bucket out and didn't even tell us. They just said hi and then they just dropped this bucket of baby turtle. And I lost it. It was such a surprise and they were so nice. They had I've some... never seen that in my whole life. I don't think I have either. There was 25 of them working at that research centre. And yeah, they protect the coral and the turtles. What time are we getting up tomorrow? Five. What, how many nautical miles? 50? Big day tomorrow, but we'll finally get to the river. What's the game plan for tonight, boys? Are we excited to sleep outside again? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a crack. Always. Look at the stars. It's pretty windy, so I was thinking here, you never know, if a big squall comes at the night, I'm gonna jump up and grab the steering wheel. And... <laughs> exactly, you can never be too prepared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It right. is a bit windier, hey? Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, so it's windy. beautiful breeze. <laughs>
Yeah, what happened last night? Oh, Darwin just woke me up probably 15 times, I reckon. Dad! Can we hug? <laughs> yes, mate. Mr. Tool sat there and thought about Mr. Tickle's arms, Mr. Nosey's nose, and Mr. Green's tummy. He smiled and then he walked. Jamie. We're just trimming the, uh, the zero a bit, just letting it out to breathe and then as we build the apparent we'll sort of pull it on a bit. We've got the front of the sail just knuckling which is perfect. We are doing between 13 and 15 knots here in 17 knots of wind and we're really heating up with this code zero so Jamie and I have just been discussing like we need to very much be paying attention and heading downwind in the puffs because it's blowing up to, what did they get to before, 19? Yeah. Yeah, which is, a, it, that's a lot for this sail. Um, and we're going quite fast. It doesn't feel out of control at all, um, but you really got to be paying attention. Look at that wake. Oh, it's coming off so clean. Ocean bolts making some power. We've seen that up at about four and a half kilowatts. We need foils. <laughs> we need foils. <laughs> Right now. Wow. Sounds like a plane taking off, yeah? <laughs> yeah right. So, we are very close to the river <clears throat> and we're just doing, we're double checking and triple, triple check. We're double checking and triple checking stuff. And if you were doing this, you should be doing it too. I'm over here in my device list. And I'm going down to echo sounder, data, depth offset zero. So that means that we will hit the bottom at about 1.4, 1.3. So Jamie and I were just discussing, is there an offset, is there not? I'm just double checking that. Then we also need to pull the rudder up so the rudder will be at about one meter and the dagger board will be at about 1.4 which will protect the prop shaft coming through and where that's hung and there's a sacrificial little skeg in front of that as well so we've got dagger board skeg propeller rudder and we would hit in that order but we're not going to hit just checking a bunch of stuff now What's going on? Pins out. The rudder's gonna fall off. Hey, Forrest, there's two timber wedges just in front of the wheel there, for a later. everything together. Is, is that just that split pin there? It holds the rudder down, yeah. Really? Just, just pin does it all. <laughs> yeah, the mechanism still kicks up, is that how it works? The correct answer to that is, is yes. The real answer is I don't know. 
because it hasn't been tested because it's brand new. Yeah. What's the go with these waypoints and murky water and uh, charts that aren't potentially accurate or? So you've said a lot there. Um, Jamie and I both independently found a website which is like a, a, a rally or a race. They have got some like an online forum dedicated to the top of Malaysia and we just in one corner of the internet found a little bit of information about this river and then Rick Blackie who owns the marina at, or manages the marina at Sutera Harbour also gave us some information so we're we believe that it's possible but yeah I'm, I'm concerned I heard that Yeah, but it's one of those ones that'll just, you just gotta wrap it up and it'll heal, fortunately. You need alcohol or you're not ready for that? Stop the bleeding first, yeah? You're gonna need a painkiller to start? Why not? But you need to let me know when the bleeding stop. The look on Elena's face was ridiculous. I heard a crunch, like an almighty crunch. I came up and there's like blood. Spilling out my hand, and like it's just looking at me like <laughs> I've seen that look a bunch of times. I fully thought he'd lost his finger. You've done this a few times, Elena. I Ready have, to see this? sadly. Oh my god, it what? literally chewed it up. Die, you little <laughs> What do you mean, die? I don't get the it. The germs. Killing the germs. Oh. Ah! We can either go uh, bandage or this tape. I feel like with your lifestyle, we would probably want this tape. Cool. Well, do you want me to hold this and you can wrap it? Okay. I hope your animal punching abilities aren't going oh, to be impaired no. when we need you most, Riley. Oh, no, yeah. Cool. I keep seeing logs in the water and thinking they're crocodiles. Jamie calls them logodiles. Very Australian. He's so funny. Logodiles. Love it. We did it. We made it. Yeah, I know. We don't celebrate our wins enough. I mean, you can't let your guard down because around this next corner we could run around. But yeah. I've been planning this trip up this river for nine months, 12 months, something like that. I've sort of had my eye on it and been researching and contacting people. And someone contacted me out of the blue. I'll flash their name up here. We're really just going to star, but have you got it on wind? No. I'll keep us on waypoint, you can keep talking. Um, oh. No, I just wanted to thank the dude who first sent me the email out of the blue because it was really handy. It got me here. Thanks, dude. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Where are the elephants? I was super impressed with how the rudder came up. That was incredible. Well done, Eminem. And uh, well done, Rapido, on pulling off the design. We just attached that, pulled it straight up. It could not have been easier. We're thrilled to venture deeper into the Kinabatangan River with you all in our next video, coming this Sunday. That's right, two videos in one week. We're on a quest to encounter every creature this river has to offer. Having returned to our trimaran, embracing the cruising lifestyle once again, has personally completely energised me, reigniting maybe the old passion for sharing our adventures with you all. Feels good. Anyway, looking forward to seeing you soon. And in the meantime, let's start a conversation in the comments below. See you there. <laughs> so many monkeys. I reckon they're orangutan. No, that wasn't an orangutan. Ara orangutan. No. Yeah, I do. That's what I think. No, they don't have tails like that. No, no, but that's what I think. Okay. All right. Oh, those. Oh, I reckon we're going to run aground here. That looks shallow, hey? So that's off the bottom of the boat, the 1.4? Yeah. Push yourself off the bar. Oh!